This is my second tutorial video. This time, I'm showing how I made Skywalker. Open Gangnam Style. Gangnam Style. Op, 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 op. Open Gangnam Style. This video has 600,000 views, but it was much more popular as a GIF on places like Tumblr, where it has been seen millions of times. What makes this video so great is that I made it so believable that Sai was actually there by having these shadowy reflections. The reflections might not be very realistic, but that doesn't matter. As long as your mind is tricked and you watch the video without noticing any problems. Video editing is an illusion. It's a magic trick. And you know it's a trick. But unlike a magic trick, I'm going to show you how it's done. Before you watch this video, I highly recommend that you watch my first tutorial video where I made Gundam Han Solo style. I introduce a lot of my terminology, so you'll be able to follow me better in this video. This tutorial follows the same idea as the last one. It's not meant to be a step-by-step -step, follow me along type video. You're supposed to see my whole process, so you'll be able to use the same techniques in your own videos. And this is the table of contents showing the sections of my video. The first section is a quick setup of the project. The second section I remove the guys from the hallway. The third section I mask outside. The fourth section I place sign into the video. The fifth section I add the reflections onto the floor. And in the last section, I do the audio editing for the music. And now let's begin the tutorial. This is a Vegas project that already has the Empire Strikes Back scene on the timeline. The scene is mostly untouched. I only did basic stabilization so it's less shaky. But let's go through it and see what I'll use. I don't need this shot, so let's delete it. Luke walking around the corner is good, and so is him hiding behind the wall. I don't need the shot of him running to the other wall, so delete it. And I'm just doing a little organization by moving the clips together. And delete everything after he starts to turn away. Copy and paste the shot of the hallway. Now let's remove the guys walking in the hallway. We'll do this by covering up the people with an empty shot of the hallway. Here's a good shot to show how to remove the people. We are looking for a moment when there is no one in the hallway, and right here, empty hallway. I put a marker down so we can come back later. Select and copy this frame, and paste it here. Click the pan and crop button, and use the anchor creation tool, and add points around the walls. So once you complete the mask, all that will be left is the hallway, so that the empty hallway covers up the people. Click the first point to complete the mask, and do a little outwards feather to make it look nicer. So now the guys are covered for one frame. Copy and paste to make sure it looks okay on the next frame. But in order for us to keep on using it, we have to copy this frame over and over again. Which is kind of annoying. So let's go back to the original frame without the mask and take a snapshot of it. The snapshot will show up here. Click and drag it down to the timeline. Copy the frame that we masked. And right click the snapshot that we dragged down and paste event attributes. It will now have the mask. Delete the two video frames since we are replacing them with the snapshot. The reason why we use the snapshot is because it stays on the same frame when we extend it. When we extend it, the masked snapshot covers up the people walking in the hallway for every frame. And it's working out pretty well, as you can see in the preview window. Now let's pull the left side of the snapshot so that it starts earlier. Mute the track that the mask is on, and you see the steps are moving a little bit, which is because the camera moves slightly. Open up the pan and crop window for the mask so that we can manually match up the stairs. Since we know the position works so well on this frame, move the keyframe to here. Go to the beginning and double click to create a new keyframe and move the position box until the hallways are in the same spot. And I make the track invisible to see if they are matching up and I repeat this until they are aligned. And that's good enough. It looks good because the first keyframe tweens into the next one. Select and copy one frame from the mask and we are going to paste it on the first frame Boba Fett appears. Here it is. We have to cover up Boba Fett's gun. But at the same time we can't cover up a part of Luke's body. So we have to make a new mask, so that it only covers part of the hallway. Start making a mask around where the gun is. Complete the mask, and move the points so that the mask doesn't cover up Luke. And move the position box so that the snapshot will be in the right spot. It lines up nicely, but let's expand the mask so it covers up a little bit more. And somehow it's feather to make it seamless. And this mask works for the next frame too, so drag the edge to the right. And let's continue extending it. And now we have to make the mask bigger to cover up Boba Fett's foot. So open up the pan and crop window, convert the keyframe to hold so it doesn't tween, and make a new keyframe here. Move the top points up and the bottom points down so that the mask will be bigger and will cover more. There are some problems, but we'll fix that later. Now that Luke moved out of the way, we need to cover up Boba Fett's reflection on the lower floor here. So go back to the mask and lower the bottom points even further. Later on, make a new keyframe and lower the bottom of the mask even more. At this point, the stairs are really messed up now. So make a new position keyframe, and adjust the box so that the stairs are aligned. And later on, you can remove this black bar. Make sure the position of the mask tweens correctly. And it does, and Boba Fett is covered up real nicely. And since the camera shakes so much, we'll have to keep on moving our mask around with it. Double click here to make a new keyframe, 
and move the position of the box so that the masked hallway is aligned. For the mask, make a new keyframe, and we need to make the mask bigger once again to cover all of Boba Fett. Close out of the pan and crop window, and let's see how it looks. There still needs to be some small adjustments, but for now, extend the clip until the next one. Do you see how the hallway's position jumps from here to here? Well, here's a nice way to fix that. Copy the first position keyframe on the second video event, and then go to the first video event and paste it as the last frame. Now it will tween into the position at the start of the next video event. So now the stairs don't jump when going into the next video event. Select this whole end section here and delete it, since we don't need Luke to run off like that. Right click a video track and insert a new video track. Copy the clip with Luke's face and paste it at the end here. But since we are making it so that Luke does not run off, and we are making it so that he's still behind the first wall, it should still cover the left side of his face. So we need to correct it by flipping the shot horizontally. And now it's fixed. There's still more work I need to do to make sure that everything is stabilized, but that'll take too long to show you, so I'm just going to drag in the fully completed rendered clip, and bring the clip onto the timeline. This is the clip of the empty hallway. The reflections of the guys walking by are completely removed, and I fixed many of the problems, but there are still some problems near the very top and the bottom, but I can just crop them out later. Now Sai is ready to enter the scene. Let's minimize this, because I have another Sony Vegas project open, just from asking Sai. So let's go to that. And this is the untouched clip from the Gundam style music video. We're going to mask out Sai here so we can place him into the hallway. Sai's hops will have to be looped, so we need to have his complete hopping motion. So let's start with him pushing off his left foot. And then end with him landing on the same foot when it's in front of him again. And clip off everything before and after. I am moving away the solid red color event. I'll show how I use it later. Open up the pan crop window for the music video clip. Zoom in on Sai, and start adding points around him to separate him from the background. Masking out Sai takes a while, so I will speed this up. A nice trick to remember is that you can use the anchor creation tool without switching away from the normal edit tool by holding down control, which is great when you are zoomed in and you have to adjust your view often. Keep adding points around the outside of his body and click the first point to complete the mask. The background is gone, and all that's left is Sai. I will bring back the red event, so it will be easier to see that we did the mask correctly. We'll feather the mask inwards to make it look nicer. The first frame is done, now on to the next frame. Delete the mask, because it doesn't match the second frame, and a new mask keyframe is automatically created. And start making a new mask by adding points. Yeah, that's going to take too long to mask all the frames again, so I'll show you the finished one. And delete the one we were working on. Now we are going to loop it, so copy the mask and paste it on another track. Overlap them for one frame so it will be easier to match them up. Open the pan and crop window for the second one. Move the position of Sai until he overlaps the other one, so that his hopping will be one continuous motion. Move the event back over one frame, and let's see how it looks, and we'll see him continuous hop. Copy and paste the mask on another track, and repeat the process. Open up the pan and crop window, move Sai, and match him up. And do the process again and again until he hops from one side of the screen to the other. And we need to do the same for the beginning so that he'll come out of the right side of the screen. So copy and paste the mask. Open up the pan and crop window and drag the position keyframe to the last frame so that Vegas doesn't make a new keyframe while we are adjusting the position. And here he is, going from the right side of the screen to the left side of the screen. But we need to add a few more frames at the end, so he does not disappear. So copy and paste the mask again, and open the pan and crop window, and move Sai into position. Make sure that none of the video events are overlapping. And let's see how the whole thing looks. And I see nothing wrong with it, so I guess everything is correct. Put all the video events together on one track. Select all of them, and copy. Go back to the other Sony Vegas project, and paste it above the Luke track. And it doesn't look that great, so we'll need to do some adjustments. Put the mask events onto the top track. And on this track, click the track motion button. Right click the position box, and flip horizontal. Now Sai will be hopping right instead of left. What we do in here affects all the video events on the whole track. For track motion, there are keyframes just like the position keyframes on the video events. Move him around and change his size so he'll actually look like he's there. And you want him to start behind the wall, so put him more to the left. 
He seems like the right size, and his feet are touching the floor. Now we need to make it so that he's covered by the walls when he enters and leaves the scene. We don't need this one video event, since Sai will be covered by the wall at this point, so delete it. Make a new video track for the walls that's above Sai. Copy the Star Wars video and paste it on the top track, and trim it to the length of Sai. And we'll cut these clips short before it goes to Luke's face. Open the pan and crop window, and start making the mask by adding points in between the walls. This mask will cut out the hallway, leaving the walls behind. I am zoomed in so I can accurately mask the walls, but since I'm so zoomed in, I have to move around my view with the normal edit tool, and when I do that, I have to click the previous point to continue the mask. Click the first point to complete the mask, and make it a negative mask. Now Sai is hidden by the walls and only visible in the hallway. Now let's do some color correction on Sai. Click the video effects tab, go to color balance, drag in the preset blue highlight to Sai. Now Sai is a blue tint to match the lighting of the hallway, but we'll make some adjustments. A little more blue and green. And now he matches. Let's save this preset so we'll use it later. We'll call it blue-green highlight, and now it shows up here. We only apply this blue-green color effect on one video event. Select the other side video events and drag our preset to them, and close out of this window that automatically pops up. Now all of the side video events have the same blue tint to them. I want side to hop in a little bit later, so drag the clips to the right, and delete the clip at the end since he'll be covered by the wall. And I want it later than this, so I'll move it to the right again. Notice how Luke looks at Sai as he passes by. That's much better, that's the timing I want. Now let's work on the reflection. Select and copy all the video events of Sai hopping, and paste it on the track below. Double click this keyframe on the track, and it'll open up the track motion window. Right click and copy the keyframe, and close out and open the track motion window on the track below, and right click the position line, and paste the keyframe. Drag the keyframe into the middle of the clips, where we can see Sai better, and double click the keyframe to reopen the window. Now we are going to reflect Sai by right clicking the position box, and flip vertical, and move the position box down, where he is being covered by the hallway mask. Alright, let's fix that. Mute the top track, and you'll see Sai below at the bottom. Make the track visible again, and we'll mask out the hallway below the stairs. Add points in between the walls and underneath the stairs and click the first point to complete the mask. Set it to negative, so the floor will be cut out for you to see the reflection underneath. And some feathering for the mask will make it look nicer. Close out the window, and double click the keyframe on the track, and move the position of the reflection so that the feet will be underneath the stairs. And then close out the window. Now we want to blur the reflection, so click the track effects button, and this will open a window for the effects we can use on this whole track. Choose Sony Radial Blur, click add, and then OK. Now we'll have this radio blur tab for us to adjust blurring for all the video events on this track. Add some strength, and move the center around until it looks good. Click the plug and chain button. I want another effect, to adjust the brightness. So click Sony Brightness and Contrast, and then click Add, and then OK. Drag the Brightness and Contrast tab to before the Radial Blur tab so that it processes it first, before blurring it. We want it to look more like a shadow, so let's decrease the brightness, and it will be darker now, and also decrease the contrast. Close the window, and for this track, lower the level to 71%, which makes it so that everything on this track is partially transparent, and that's what we need for the reflection. The reflection looks good, but I just noticed I made a mistake. I messed up when I was doing the masking for the ground. The negative mask was supposed to end at the wall's reflection, not the wall itself. So open up the pan and crop window, and fix the mask like this. You could delete the points, but clicking and dragging them out of the way can be faster. And now you can see size reflection more accurately hidden by the wall. And I'm just going to make some small adjustments on the reflection's position. It looks pretty good, but I'll add another keyframe so the reflection will go slightly higher near the end so we don't see his shoes. And now move both keyframes a little bit earlier. Now it will tween from the first keyframe to the new one. When I double click to add a new keyframe, it expanded the track's keyframe properties. Just click this button here on the left to hide it. Now we need a reflection for his feet, so select size video events at the top and copy and paste it on the track below. We want this reflection to be a similar size as the actual sign, so double click the keyframe for the side track and copy it in the opened window and open up the track motion window for the foot reflection track, and paste. Move the keyframe over to where we can see Psy, so we'll know what we are changing. Double click the keyframe to open up the track motion window, right click the position box, and flip vertical. Psy will be flipped upside down, and move him so that both sets of feet touch. But the problem is that we see his upper body below the stairs, since the mask ends there. So we'll cover him up. Create a new video track right above the foot reflection track. Click the Star Wars video event, select Copy, and then paste on the newly made track. Open the pan crop window, and make a quick mask that covers everything in the hallway below the stairs. 
It doesn't need to look good, since there's already a mask on the top track that takes care of the walls and the stairs. Close out of the window, and let's see how the shoe reflection looks. We can make some small adjustments to make it perfect, but this is good enough. Now we're going to add the same effects as the other reflection. Click the track FX button for this track, and the same window will appear. Choose brightness and contrast, click add, and then radial blur, click add, and then OK. Now we have these two effects tabs. You can click the checkbox to disable or enable the effect. Decrease the brightness and the contrast, and go to the radial blur tab, and increase the strength until it looks good. Close the window, and make this reflection partially transparent too, but not as much. Now let's see everything, all together. And it's very convincing, as if Sai is actually there in the scene. Go to the Project Media tab, and drag in the Gundam Style music video to the side on the bottom track. We are going to be using the audio around the time when he's hopping in the music video. Open Gangnam Style! Press U to separate the audio from the video. Select and copy this section. Delete the original Star Wars audio and paste the music. Press V to show the volume envelope. Double click the line to add points. Add two at the beginning and two at the end. And move the music so that Luke stops walking on the beat. Start. Add a point to the volume envelope when Sai enters the scene. And add a couple of points before Luke goes around the corner and a couple after. Lower this point so the music starts quiet and gets louder until Sai enters. And move the final point more to the right so it will take longer to reach the top volume. Delete this point, since we don't need it. Lower this line and it will lower the points on both sides, making the beginning quieter. And lower the point when Luke turns the corner so it isn't as loud. Drag the left edge to the left. And make a fade in, since there's a sound at the beginning. Add a volume point when Sai is leaving. Short in the end, add a volume point and lower it so the music gets quieter. Now I'm going to add a pan envelope by pressing P. The pan envelope decides how much sound each speaker gets. If the line is up, more sound will be coming out of the left speaker. If the line is down, then more sound will be coming out of the right speaker. The pan envelope is the orange line, while the volume envelope is the purple line. I'm just adding sets of points in the pan envelope, so I can choose where the music will be mostly coming from. Raise the point at the beginning so it sounds like the music is coming from the left side, and that it's getting closer to the center. I never bring it up to 100%, because people might have difficulty hearing it if they only have one speaker. If you have a proper stereo setup, you can hear the music mostly coming from your left speaker. With audio editing in general, just mess around until it sounds good, because that is really what I'm doing right now. And as Sai is leaving, have it pan down so the music travels to the right. And when it shows Luke's face, have the music quickly switch back to the left speaker to give the shot more of an impact. Grab the bottom edge of the track like this, and drag it down, so it's easier to see our audio editing on the envelopes. But I think we're all set, so let's hear it. That looked and sounded great. We are done with the editing. And that concludes my tutorial. I don't have another one planned, but if you're watching one of my videos and you're wondering how I didn't edit, leave a comment and I might show you how I made it. So please, speak up, leave comments, and subscribe.